What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to create a complex ramp that has some ups and downs and we're going to texture that using extensions. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So all of the extensions that we're going to use in this video should be available in the notes below the video. They should all be downloadable for free. Um, none of these are paid extensions. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off and we're going to create our ramp. And so the way that we're going to create our ramp is we're just going to kind of model out some curves. So I'm just going to draw some curves that kind of run along this face. We basically just don't want this to run 100% straight, right? That's really what we're looking for here. So we're just going to draw some curves just like this and then we're gonna offset these just a little bit like this. So whatever the width of your road would be. So we'll call it 10 feet in this situation. So what we have is we have a road here now. And so what you could do is you could come in here and draw a line on either end of these, but we don't really wanna do that because there's no detail, right? There's no geometric detail in here, it's just a face. And what that means is that means that later on when we add a texture to this, it's not gonna follow the path, it's just gonna be kind of dropped on here and it's gonna look a little bit weird. So what we wanna do instead is we want to select these two edges and we're gonna use the extension Curve Aloft in order to create a face in here. So um, Curve Aloft is a free extension from Fredo 6 and we want to select these. We wanna select the option for Loft by Spline. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna create this quad geometry in here that we can use an extension a little bit later in order to create a texture that runs along. And in fact, let's take a look at that now. So I'm just gonna come in here and reverse these faces. And remember how before this was just a regular face? Well, if we go into our view, click on Hidden Geometry, you can see how there's a lot more detail in here now. And so with this detail, we can use this in order to make our ramp go up and down. So the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna use sandbox tools. So the way that we're gonna use sandbox tools is I've clicked into this shape already. I don't wanna have anything selected. I just wanna activate the smooth tool right here. And what that's gonna allow me to do is that's gonna allow me to move this geometry up. And so you can see how what I can do with this is I can use this in order to make my geometry move up and down right? So you can use this in order to do that. You could make this maybe a little bit smaller and affect less of this, but we'll go ahead and we'll say this is what our path is going to look like for right now. So we've got our path right here that we've created in 3D. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a copy of this over here so I'm not working on top of all of this. Um, sometimes you might want to make a copy before you do all of this in case you make a mistake, but for now I think we're going to be okay. So what we want to do now is we need to create some walls. And so there's a couple different ways you could do this, right? You could come over here and use these lines and just offset them and create a wall. So I could just select all of these just by uh, double clicking on them using the offset tool and offsetting this out, maybe like eight inches or something like that. And in this situation, we could take that and we could fill it in. Oops like this, and then we could push pull it. So we could push pull this up and also down in order to create a wall like this. That's a perfectly acceptable solution. The only problem with that solution though is the top of the wall doesn't follow along with our road. And so if we wanted this to follow along with our road, we could do something a little bit different. So first thing I'm gonna do is turn my hidden geometry off. And then I'm gonna go in here and I want to select all the pieces that make up this edge. And I wanna make sure I've only picked up the edge pieces right here. Well, now we're gonna use another extension. This one is also a Fredo 6 extension, and this one is called Tools on Surface. So, and I will link to all of these in the notes down below, but Tools on Surface has an offset on surface command. What the offset on surface command is gonna do is that's gonna allow me to offset this line in a 3D space. So if we look at this, you can see how this is offsetting this line outward, just like this. And we'll go ahead and say we're gonna offset it six inches out. And in this situation, this actually worked pretty good. We have one area in here that didn't get filled in and tracing over it probably won't help. This probably needs to be a try. So I'm just gonna draw a line from this corner to this corner. Well now, 
I have these two faces. Well, the cool thing about having this face is now we can use another extension from Fredo 6 called Joint Push Pull. And so if I use Joint Push Pull, what that allows me to do is that allows me to push pull either multiple faces or it allows me to push pull curved faces. And so in this situation, we could use this to push pull this face up using this tool right here, the joint push pull tool. We could use that to push pull this up. And so what we want to do in this particular situation is there's a tool in here called vector push pull. So what we want to do is we want to push pull this straight up and down on the Z axis. And for right now, I'm going to hide my extras just for the moment. But what we want to do is we just want to select this uh, we just want to push pull this up along the Z axis. So we can tap the up arrow key in order to do that. So you can see how when we, um, when we tap the up arrow key that locks that to this axis and we can use this to push pull that wall straight up and down from the point that it's at right now. So what you have is you have a curve that now follows along with your face. But we also want this to have a wall right? So we want this to have a wall that's going straight down and it's landing flat. Well, joint push pull has another great tool that we can use for that. So what we're going to do is we're going to select this face. We're going to do a shift click and we're going to select this face. Whoops. And in this situation, we want to activate joint push or vector push pull again. So we have those two selected and we want to tap on vector push pull. But this time we don't want to push pull this straight up and down like we did before. We want to push pull this so that it's flat on the bottom. So the way that we're going to do that is if you look over here, there's a little arrow button for more options. Well, if you click on more options, there's an option in here that allows you to project the shape on a plane. Well, what that means is that means when we push pull this this time, when we select that, it's going to flatten out your result. So if I click and move my mouse right here, we'll go ahead and set it on this corner. What it's going to do is it's going to push pull that straight down and it's going to go to a flat plane. So what we have here is we have a wall that goes down and lands flat. So then we could do the exact same thing on the other side. So we'll just select these, use vector push pull, turn off project on plane to project it up. And we'll project it up about 10 inches. Then we'll select the bottom. We'll activate vector push pull with project to plane selected. And that gives us our wall on the other side. Well, now all we have to do is come in here and add textures. So the way that we're going to add textures is we're going to use an extension called Through Paint, also from Fredo 6. Because right now, let's say that we were to put down, let's go into our landscaping and let's select this stamped brick. So right now, if I use the stamp brick, you can see how everything is getting tiled really funky, right? So if you look at this, like none of your brick material is going on here properly. Well, when we use through paint, which is contained inside of an extension called Fredo Tools, what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to map our texture properly. So if I click on this, that's going to activate the tool, and then you can use this to sample a material. Then you can click just like this. Well, when you click, what that does is that maps your texture along this surface. So you can see how now this follows the curve of your surface. You can do the, some other things in here too. Like for example, if I click, I could scale this up to make my pavers bigger like this. So then we would just do the same thing with the walls, right? So the walls are probably going to be made up of some kind of a stone material. And sometimes with the stone material, you don't even need to really do that. So you'd probably just apply this to the wall. You'd probably apply a concrete material. To this object right here, because you'd probably have some sort of a concrete cap on top of this. You might not, but it really depends on what you're trying to do. But then we can just select this, 
click again, and now what that's given us is that's given us a complex path with textures mapped properly and walls just like this. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Did you know you could do this with these extensions? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.